All right, folks, so now we are ready for experiment number three. Experiment number three is very interesting. What we have to do is first we need to validate the CMOS inverter circuit. So using the CD4007 chip, where it has three pairs of complementary CMOS transistors, NMOS and PMOS. One of those pairs is used as a CMOS inverter. So let's show you the way we did that. Uh, basically, I used a single pair of CMOS inverter, CMOS transistors, where they work as inverters, the NMOS and the PMOS, and I used the pairs on the far right. So if you look into the chip, when I show you the circuit diagram for it, you can see that it's a simple circuit to do. So here I'm zooming in. You can see that I'm using those transistors on the right side of the chip. So I did configure the circuit to give me a CMOS inverter. And then I used power supply, DC power supply at the moment, to uh, investigate and implement this inverter. So if you come over here, if we come over here, we can see that uh, we are using the two uh, power supplies here. And at this point, we have 5 volts applied to the first uh, power supply, which is the VDD. And the input is assigned to a value of uh, 0. And now, if we go to the DMM, I'm going to measure VI and V out of the inverter. So over here, that the top one will read the uh, output voltage, which reads 5 volts, and the input voltage reads negative uh, 6.09 millivolts, roughly 0. It's a 0 volt. When V uh, I is 0 volts, V out is 5 volts. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly increase the input voltage using the knob of my DC power supply, and you're going to see the bottom DMM will start to increase in voltage, and we're going to see the transition of, uh, of V out uh, uh, as it goes from 5 volts to 0. So I'm going to use the knob for VI. And so this is very small. Let me start to increase the resolution. So you can start to see that at... Uh, by increasing the voltage a little bit, nothing happens to V out at this point. The reason is that VI haven't reached the threshold voltage to turn on the transistor. You want it to turn on the bottom transistor to start conducting, which is the NMOS. So VI is too small at this point. It's not turning on the power supply. I'll continue increasing it so it's increasing. And you can see that still nothing turned on at 0.7 volts. You still have 5 volts at the output. The bottom transistor is still off. We're going to keep increasing it slowly. Ah, you start to see here around 1.2 volts. Uh, we start to see that V out start to drop. And that's a good sign. So in this region, what we call sub-threshold voltage is basically a small VGS above the threshold. It's close to the threshold voltage. A little bit below the threshold voltage, small current will conduct. It's called the sub-threshold conduction region. So I start to increase the voltage even more. And you start to see that V out will start to drop. Right? So I would say around... 1.5 is my threshold voltage, maybe a little bit lower, 1.45. I would say this here is my threshold voltage. Remember that uh, transistors do conduct in the sub-threshold voltage, but it conducts very small current that the approximation that we use, we say that the threshold voltage is the voltage at which the channel is created and the transistor is conducting, is a first cut approximation. The truth is that Transistor will conduct near the threshold voltage, below the threshold voltage value. So, and by increasing the input voltage, now you start to see that the uh, output voltage start to drop. Right? That's very interesting. At this point here, by increasing the voltage even more, you start to see a large drop. So, in this point, 
you can see just before that and right before after that at this point where we have the high gain this is the high gain region now in this uh, in this region both transistor is going to be in the saturation region both transistors are in the saturation region and you can see that's dropping dramatically right so i can see that by going into a smaller resolution I wanted to know what voltage, what, in, what value of the input voltage will give me half the output voltage value. So I wanted to play with it here. I would say roughly around 2.057, 2.057 2 will give me around 2.5 volts output is the midpoint. This is very important value because the CMOS inverter will act as amplifier when both transistors are in the saturation region. In fact, this is the whole idea of something we call uh, CMOS amplifiers. Uh, for this particular reason, where we can use CMOS circuit to work as amplifier. And amplifiers are so fundamental blocks, basic blocks within analog systems. That's why we stress them early on in introductory to electronic circuitry courses. So, in any case, uh, in this region, both transistors are in the saturation region, and a small little change in VI will lead to a large change in V out. You can see that here, right? So, by changing the uh, voltage, right? Now we dropped, V out dropped, right? VI is 2.07, and V out is 1.95. Right? So a small change in VI caused a large drop in V out. And keep in mind that this work as inverting amplifier. When VI increases, V out decreases. So and we're gonna continue increasing VI. So I'm gonna increase the resolution. I'm gonna drop it a little bit faster. So you start to see that uh, now the V out start to drop dramatically right and by increasing vi and now we increase vi more and vi drops more so i will continue doing that so you can see let's find the threshold voltage we missed that. The threshold voltage of the top. Let's see what's the value going to be. So here we are conducting in the sub-threshold voltage around 3.2. So I start to see sub-threshold voltage around uh, when VI equal 3.9, right? Uh, I'm sorry, when VI equal 3.0. So let's see that 3.0, even below 2.9. Yeah, so I would say around 2. Point, maybe 2.8. It's in the sub-threshold voltage at this point. So even I would say 2.75 when VI equals 2.75, that's the time the top transistors start to conduct. That means the threshold voltage for the PMOS is roughly around 2.25, right? negative voltage, negative 2.25, right? It's 5 minus 2.75 will give me uh, uh, 2.25 and the threshold voltage for the BMOS is a negative value so it's going to be VGS it's VI minus VS 2.75 minus 5 which will equal to negative 2.25 so that's the threshold voltage for the BMOS transistor uh, in any case you can see that by increasing VI when VI will go to 5 volts Uh, v out will start to drop to zero. So V out is now at zero. It's been off. Right? The 
top transistor is off and the bottom transistor is on so let's just continue at 5 volts let's stop at 5 volts so what we're going to do in the next uh, in the next uh, uh, video in the next slide we're going to uh, show you how is the amplifier is working by applying the input signal to come from the function generator and we will be able to measure V out as AC signal. So let's do that when we come back. All right, folks, so now what we did, we came back to the circuit and we have used a function generator as the input signal and uh, we're gonna measure the output signal using the oscilloscope. So the blue line on the oscilloscope is basically what V out is and we have adjusted the input signal, the DC offset, to be around 2.082 volts and that should correspond to 2.5 volts at the output. So if I zoom in to the scope, I'm going to zoom into the scope, so we can see that there is five divisions up and uh, for the blue line and each division is 0.5 volts so clearly that we have 2.5 volts if we come in to the function generator we should see that the value the DC offset value going to be at uh, 2.082 volts so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna also apply a 10 uh, millivolt peak to peak sine wave at 1 kilohertz and we should see that there will be a gain showing up at the output so the way we're going to do that is basically we're going to come to the uh, oscilloscope and we're going to do AC coupling so we're going to do AC coupling and that's going to remove the uh, DC offset and will only show the AC signal so let's do that and now I'm going to come in over here and I'm going to do AC coupling and clearly it showed now the AC signal for the input and the output. So if we're going to play with the scale to make the signals a little bit bigger to get more accurate readings. So I'm going to make VI bigger value and V out to be a bigger value. And we're going to do some major, we're going to read the measurements here. So we're going to go to uh, major. And clearly that we have the input signals uh, read around... 8.24 millivolts and the output around uh, 416 millivolts so we're looking at a gain of roughly uh, a little bit less than 50 in fact that uh, you will be able to calculate that once we show you the data once we store the data but the gain going to be a little bit below 50 uh, and that's uh, basically works as amplifier so CMOS technology can be used as analog circuits so something I want you to see here it's probably worth mentioning you see those spikes you have here those are the signals of all those uh, the Wi-Fi routers in the building and that caused some noise because we are actually measuring very small signal at the input and this small signal that comes in from the Wi-Fi router will go through the amplifier and it will amplify it. So you see those spikes. It's noisy signal. It's not a clean signal. I use the average value here to show you the clean signal. But it is actually noisy input signal. And this input signal go through the amplifier. That's why you get the spikes every now and then, you see. All those things come in from the Wi-Fi router. It sends a very strong pulse to wake up any Wi-Fi transmitter receiver. That's why we get it. This was the end of experiment number three. And now in experiment number three, we were able to look at the curve transfer characteristics of the 
CMOS inverter, and then we use the CMOS inverter as amplifier, and we have a gain of roughly 50, so we're going to save this data also, and you're going to be able to look at it as part of the report. This is the end of lab number eight, very important lab, very practical circuits. A lot of fundamental concepts are learned in this lab. I want you to pay attention to it and do your best. So good luck to you, and I'll see you in the next lab.